Hello my friends! Today we are going to do some watercolor painting. We're going to start out with some things we find in the sea. We're going to be doing all plants today. But let's start out with some sea plants. So you're going to need a clean glass of water. Um, you can get two if you feel like you need it. I typically just need one. You're going to need some paints obviously and a couple of palettes because with watercolor you're going to need to be mixing them a lot with water or other colors even more colors. We're not actually going to be using too many colors today because it is mostly nature. I like to have a palette knife handy. Any kind of knife will do for this part or a spoon even. A few different kinds of brushes, some big, some small. Mostly small is what you're going to want because we're going to do a little more detailed work. You're going to need a towel or paper towels if you prefer. I like using a towel because I don't like being wasteful. Alright, so now I'm going to take those first colors. I have a blue, a purple, and a pink. I'm going to take a little bit of that blue watercolor paste. I'm going to move it into an empty slot, and then I'm going to take my water. And I'm just going to start taking a big, thicker brush that can hold a lot of water. And I'm going to introduce a good amount of water into the smaller amount of paint in the pan. I'm going to mix that up nice. And I'm going to do this for every single one of my paints. And then I'm also going to mix a little bit of water into the paints on the left side, but I'm going to keep them thicker and darker. Today we're going to do an anemone. Anemone, I feel like Nemo. Anemone. So see, I mixed up my paints. The ones on the top are thinned out and a little bit lighter, and those are the ones that I'm going to start with. And I'm going to use blue first, but of course it does not really matter which color you use, of course. And I'm going to be doing it, it's going to end up looking like this. I like to show a reference picture first. It's, the anemones are going to end up looking pretty much like that. But once again, you know, art doesn't usually turn out exactly the same way. So it's probably going to look a little bit different. So I'm going to take a brush that's pretty thin, but pretty long too. Because that's the best way to make anything that's going to be thin and wavy. You don't want it to seem too uh, stiff. If I wanted it stiffer, I'm just going to wet that brush. If I wanted it stiffer, I would use a shorter brush, but we want it to be pretty long so that it can be nice and wavy, just like a sea anemone. So I'm going to dip into that thinner blue, and I'm just going to start brushing in different directions, keeping it wavy, keeping it loose, not being too particular about it. Because, you know what, sea creatures, sea plants, I guess they really are creatures, I guess they are alive, just like coral. Uh, they're, they're not uh, particular about how they grow, they just grow, so <laughs> remember that when you're painting them. I would just like to come out and say I am not an artist and I do not claim to be, but these are just some fun things that I wanted to teach to some other people. So now I'm going to go into that darker blue color, and the one that's a little bit thicker. And I'm just going to go over the light with the dark. And I feel like this looks really pretty. It gives it some dimension without being too complicated. Just doing one light color and one dark color. You don't have to be too particular. Just make some more dark uh, little swooshies around. I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> you probably want to wait a little bit longer in between the light and the dark, unlike I did. Um, because sometimes it bleeds out. And you don't want that. Now I'm just going to go in with my other two colors, do the exact same thing, light first, dark second. So now we finished that one. Looks pretty similar to the first one, but not all art is the same and not all sea anemones are the same. 
So now moving on, our next underwater uh, creature, I guess, is going to be coral. We're going to do some coral. Here's just an example of what I like to do. And today it's going to look a little bit different because I'm only going to use a thick brush. I'm not going to try and use a bunch of different kind of brushes like I did in that painting I just showed you. So I'm going to be using the same colors like I did for the sea anemones. And I'm going to take a thicker brush now. It's still pretty long, but it's going to be thicker. About the same length, but thicker is what I meant to say. <laughs> and I also like to take some masking tape when I do these. Um, often with my uh, painting, if it's going to be more of like a landscape, I like to set out a straight base just because I think it looks really pretty, really nice. So I'm just going to take that masking tape, or painter's tape, whatever you want to call it, and I'm just going to lay it down there. It won't hurt the paper as long as you take it off really nice and slow. And I'm just going to start with whichever color, it honestly doesn't matter. And what you're going to do is you're going to just dip it lightly in whichever color, whichever level of thickness you want. And you're going to draw thick, thick branches just like with coral. They're thick and then you have random pieces coming off of each other. So sometimes you'll have a branch with a bunch of other branches coming off of that one. And it's all, none of, none of it's uh, like a tree branch that comes out to a, to a thin point. It all stays pretty, pretty much thick. So just do that over and over again with whichever colors you like. I'm going to use pretty much all the colors. And just have fun with it. Make them all a little bit different. Make them unique. Okay, so now I'm going to take off nice and slow that painter's tape. You can see it does take a little bit of the paper with it, but it's no big deal. Now we have a nice straight bottom and some beautiful coral that intersect. They look very different from these, but hey, like I said, that's, uh, that's painting sometimes. And like I said, I used different brushes. So if you want to try that other technique, just use different size brushes to make your coral, and it'll look a lot more like that painting I showed you before. So now let's do some above water. We're going to start with some fir branches. And I'll give you just a quick glance at some that I've done before. So these I like to do a brown stem, just like you would see on a fir tree. And then we do quick wispy motions to make the, uh, I don't know if those are called leaves or needles. I guess maybe they're called needles. So I'm going to dip a long thin brush like I've been using a lot, like I used on the um, anemones, and I'm going to make a long, pretty straight line with that brown paint, and that's all the brown paint is going to be used for, so make sure you don't use too much of that because you really do not need a lot. Okay, then I'm going to take the same brush with some green. Uh, we're going to be using just an earthy toned kind of green, pretty watered down, doesn't need to be thick, but you decide on how thick you want it to be, how much water you want to add, because it'll all depend on what color you're wanting to get out of it. So I just take a pretty deep dark green, but I do water it down a lot. And you're just doing quick swipes, quick, quick swipes. You want to make sure they're pretty thin because fur needles are actually really thin. Um, 
and I'm just gonna do that up and down. Uh, sometimes you'll find when you're tipping into your to your paint that parts will be darker than others, so just make sure you go over that. That's just natural. I mean, that's what the real world looks like. Uh, shadows and things like that. But just make sure you're going over those parts so it doesn't look too weird. I'm gonna do one side and then the other. This one's a super, super quick painting to do, but it's really pretty. Like, just putting this on the wall in your bedroom or in some kind of room that has, like, a, a very natural vibe to it. I think it's really pretty, super easy painting, but you can say, hey, I did that all by myself. So here's that example again. These pretty much do look the same, because once again, it's not as super complicated, but it's very pretty, very nice. All right, now we're going to do a branch with small leaves. That's really the only way I can describe it because it's not like a particular plant or anything. But it is very, very pretty. I really like this one. Again, just a very simple, nice, kind of uh, dark, natural green color. This time I am going to use a very short, stubby brush. Um, all the brush and paints I'm using today, and the paper, literally everything I'm using today is Artist Loft from Michaels. This is the, like the Michaels house brand basically. Super cheap, but perfectly fine quality. So first I'm going to take green, I'm not going to use brown, I'm going to use green, and I'm going to create kind of a curving branch. And from there, I'm just going to go back and forth and make tiny little leaves. I think we all know how to make leaves, it's not very hard. Um, one thing to remember, one way you can just make it look a little bit more realistic and just a little, uh, I don't know, more grown up, not like you, you drew it when you were, you know, a little kid drawing trees and things like that, is to leave a little bit of light. Like there's a little bit of a white space still on all the leaves that I do. Um, and then also bring it out to a really, really defined point. That'll help a lot too. Alright, so now we've got our little our little branch with little leaves. Um, the one I did before was a little bit lighter. This one got a little bit darker than that one, but I like both of them. I think they both look nice. So now we're going to do some blue bonnets. These are the only above ground plant with color in them. Um, they're super pretty, super easy though. I like these. They don't look quite as realistic as the others, but it's kind of like you're looking at them from a distance, and I like the kind of artsiness to it. Um, with these, you're going to take a long, thin brush once again, and you're just going to make some long stems coming up from the ground, coming from different which ways. And I like making the stems that I intend to be attached to the actual, like, blue bonnet blossoms, I guess that's what they would be called. And then from there, I like making just little bits of grass, little bits of, uh, yeah, grass, I guess, is what it would be. Um, just kind of branching off from there. You want some short ones, some long ones. Then we're going to take that short, stubby brush again. And you're going to dip into that blue that you made earlier for the coral. Um, I'm going to do mostly that thicker blue, so the one with less water in it. And you're going to stop at the or start <laughs> at the tops of the stems that you want to be your blue bonnets, and make it a nice, pretty defined tip. And you're going to want the center to be thicker, bringing it back down to a thinner base. Not totally as thin as the top, because that's not how blue bonnets really are. 
Um, I mean, they don't look like this at all anyway, but <laughs> um, a, th a thicker middle, bringing it back down a little bit thinner. This one I made on um, this leaf is a little bit big, um, but that's okay, I just kept making it bigger <laughs> anyway. But hey, whatever, it's art. Alright, and here's that picture from before again. I hope you guys had fun watching this today, and I hope you gave watercolor a try, because even if you're like me and totally not an artist, it's still super fun to do. I really enjoyed it, and it's a great way to pass the time while you're stuck at home like we are right now. But once again, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, my dear friends.